Welcome in everybody. We are going to start the stream in about a minute. We are just getting some final touches set up and then we will get things rolling. So I'm really excited for this one. This is going to be a straight through performance. It is, you know, we've all read it before, so we have more of a sense of direction on how to execute the lines. But yeah, we'll do our best with <laughs> not having to break down or anything, but it may be inevitable. All right, 30 seconds left, and then we will get the introduction going. And then soon after, we will begin. All of these moments will be time stamped, so anybody watching it as a VOD or on YouTube can go to those exact moments to skip any dead time, I should say. Alrighty, folks. Welcome in. Hello, hello. I could see that my reactive is not working for some reason, but that's okay. You can just have imaginary voice me. Sometimes things just happen, right? Last minute shenanigans, but it's okay. Anyway, I am going to introduce the lovely guests and co-voice actors who will be with us tonight. But I am going to Anime Expo. Welcome in. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey, hey, folks. Hello. So, Dang. these are our, the co-voice actors with me voicing past Mori and Stella is going to be Yao, or voices underscore of underscore of Yao on Twitter. <laughs> That's two ofs. <laughs> of, of. You got to type both. No, I'm kidding. Of, of, of. <laughs> Uh, Man, uh, stuttering there. But yeah, voices of Yao, basically, with underscores. And yeah. then our other co-voice actor with us tonight will be voicing Memento. It is Ice Fang VA. Hello. Hi, everyone. We are glad to be here and to do this. So mm -hmm. <laughs> We have all read it at least once. One of us actually helped with... Uh, <laughs> Some edits and stuff, so oh, definitely experience cool. there. Yeah, I wonder who. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh well. But yes, we, we. Yeah, we are definitely excited to hand this performance off, or well, present it, I should say. Mm -hmm. We're coming a bit tough, which may be a key theme. Just not knowing what to say. So. With that, we will give a 30 second countdown as I put in the timestamp for the reading begins. Anybody, once again, watching the VOD will be able to skip to the timestamps, especially with YouTube system. All right. Here we go. This will be in the downloads folder. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one, and we begin. At 3.05 a.m., during the dark of a drizzly morning, I finally succumbed to leukemia. Four years, huh? By the end, I wish I'd only lasted one. I traced a figure over the corpse's cheek. Nothing. No sensation in my fingertips, nor depression in the flesh. There's only total numbness. I stood, feeling complete weightlessness. My feet felt no pressure against the floor. Along with my touch, my sense of smell was also absent. The air should have been thoroughly drenched with the stinging odor of formaldehyde and embalming fluid. Yet, it was no more pungent than a glass of water. A mortician reached through my non-corporeal figure and 
dotted the body with several small metal discs. There was no one around when I had finally passed. No one mourned me. No one wept. I wanted to know I meant something. That part of the world was taken away. The mortician coughed and sprayed the air with a tinge of deodorant before he prepared the corpse for the flames. That body. God, it doesn't even look like me. The milky skin, dilated eyes, and a slack jaw barely covering the teeth. It's a limp hunk of meat thou soon be ash. A tear dropped from my cheek and vanished into the floor. What am I even doing here? Is this some dying dream? Didn't I already kick the bucket? Or is this limbo? I mean, I guess it's better than the alternative down there. Then again, Spending an eternity watching the world go by as I remain some kind of apparition sounds like an idea straight from Lucifer himself. Well, what else can I do? What am I supposed to do? I see the mortician prepare my casket for cremation. Seems like they'll be burning it all up soon. As disturbing as it is, part of me wants to see. Maybe I can phase into the oven and get a good look at the incineration of the body that once belonged to me. Maybe it's for the best I'm dead. I turned away and walked towards the door. Instinctively, I reached for the handle only for it to phase through my fingers. Still a dumbass in death. I walked through the door, across the hall, and through the wall into the morning drizzle. Not bad day to die, I guess. Weather's appropriate. I look up to the gorgeous gray sky that can almost feel the faint dapple of water on my face. During mornings like these, I would curl up with a cup of coffee and simply stare out into the endless white fog. I'd gaze at nothing in particular, just enjoying the blankness of the sky's canvas. I wandered outside the mortuary until I reached the garden. The spring rains had brought dazzling flower blossoms that adorned the edges of the pathways. They all lead to a tall fountain at its center. I approached the fountain and laid at its base. The pattering water provided a nice, soothing ambience. If this truly isn't some dying dream, Nothing seems to be stopping me from going anywhere I'd like. I wonder if they just... forgot about me. Am I just a lone soul, consigned to wander around forever? Might actually be fun for a century or so. I dipped a foot into the fountain. As expected, no ripple, no chills. I couldn't rightly tell if it was actually submerged at first. Is this how I spend my afterlife? Playing around at a fountain outside some backwater mortuary? Do you enjoy the water too? Uh, huh? A voice. Is someone there? Oh, I turned around and scanned my surroundings, but I... Didn't see anyone. Up here, sir. Wait. What? Uh, 
What, what the fuck? I collapsed, partially phasing through the ground. What are you? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mori. I didn't mean to startle you. Let me hop on down. That thing threw itself off the statue and into the water. No splash. No. This has to be some sort of nightmare. Stay back, please! Let me die, okay? No, you already did that, though. A few hours ago, actually, you finally passed away. So, don't worry. You are dead now. I can assure you. Uh... What the fuck are you talking about? The creature sighed and dragged a claw across its fur. He had shaggy, pitch-black fur. It wavered delicately, as if exposed to a soft breeze. Ghostly petals tapered from his sleeves and tail, swirling around in the air for a moment before fading into oblivion. This demon knelt down into the water pool. He stared at me intensely through those hellish red eyes. I'm sorry. Perhaps I should let you calm down first. You want me to calm down? I have no idea what's even going on! Well, as I mentioned before, you're dead. However, you haven't been taken beyond yet. You're in the in-between, as I call it. Taken... beyond? Yes, where all souls go. Oh, how rude of me. I should have introduced myself. I am Memento, your reaper and guide into the after. It extended one of its paws towards me. I stared blankly for an uncomfortable beat before the wolf creature retracted its arm. I am sorry. Was that inappropriate? I do apologize, Mori. I hope I did not offend you in any manner. You know my name? Of course. It would be rude not to. Oh, my nerves cool to touch. If this thing meant to harm me, assuming that's even possible, it would have done so now. It spoke in a hushed tone, almost reserved. It was like the whispers of the wind. But memento... Yes? Yes, sir. Is there something you require? Can we... Roll back a bit? Because I have a lot of questions. Of course. Ask away. So, you reap my soul. You took it out of my body. Um, well, no, actually. What? I mean, that is my job. My handiwork is quite excellent. You will find no other reaper with a more refined skill, I assure you. However, I did not take your soul myself. Usually I'm supposed to, but this time I just let the spirit leave the shell naturally. So, uh, now you see me. Why? He's a reaper. My reaper. Why did he take my soul? What the hell is this guy on about? God, if this is a dying dream, please just let me croak already. Why would you do that? I died hours ago, and only now you show up? Do you know what it's like gawking at your own corpse? I meant nothing by it, I assure you, sir. It's simply... Uh... He looked away and scratched the back of his ghostly scruff. 
I wanted to ask you something. Huh? Me? You want to ask me something? He nodded. What can I possibly tell you that you wouldn't already know? You're some kind of grim reaper spirit or whatever. What could I possibly do for you? Memento nibbled on his finger and looked anxiously to the side. I wanted to know what it's like. Know what what is like? What it's like to live. I've taken humans from all over the world to this to their final rest. The elderly, children, mothers, fathers, even newborns. I guide all of them to the end. So why did you make me wait so long? Well, I just wanted to make sure you had time to process it all. I didn't want to jump in and bombard you with my inquiries just after you died. But why specifically me? Memento tilted his head, seemingly pondering the question. I've done this for so, so long. My time with each human is short, perhaps a few minutes at most. But I always learn the most fascinating things. A mother once begged me not to take her from her family. She wept, cried, and cursed me. However, there was another time an elderly man embraced me with open arms. He thanked me for my arrival and walked with me peacefully. I am met with hatred, terror, and disgust. Death must be so terrible, yes? The end of your waking life? The end of everything? Yet, I meet those who look back fondly at their life. Those who seem content to leave. Those who are happy. And it's those happy ones that make me wonder, why? I still don't understand. There are people dying from all over the globe at this very moment. Great scientists, people with families, war heroes. I mean, I'm just a 30-something screw-up who died young and alone. I'm no one. I lived my life as no one. And I'll be forgotten. It's all the same in the end. Everyone's forgotten eventually. Or, anyways, I just thought it was the right time to pose my question. The right time? I guess I could have asked the last one. Or the one before. Or the one before. But I decided, Memento, you're going to ask the next one. And so I did. It was quite difficult, too. I had to plan my inquiry properly. So, you spent the last few hours just thinking of how you are going to ask me? Er, when you put it that way, it does sound quite cowardly, I must admit. But I wanted to make sure you were comfortable first before I dropped this question on you. And seeing your reaction, perhaps it wasn't executed most perfectly. So, you're asking me just on whim? Out of the millions of people, I just so happen to be the one. That's about the extent of it, yes. What if I decline? Memento frowned and looked away. Well, then I will simply take you beyond, like the rest. Beyond? What is there beyond? There's nothing to be afraid of. Memento's ears twitched. It's, um... Well, it's very peaceful. 
peaceful. Yes, eternal bliss, some may say. And it's where everyone goes. I nearly fell to my knees then there. Eternal happiness? I will get to live in pure bliss for the rest of eternity? Uh, uh, the thought of it was almost oh, too overwhelming. What would it be like? Who would I get to see? The visages of important historical figures, great film stars, genius academics race through my mind. I, I get to go there? T t to enjoy paradise? Forever? N n no kidding. You're not kidding me, are you? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! God, thank you! Oh, whoever's in charge here! To his tears welled in my eyes. I didn't even bother to wipe them away. After everything I experienced, something amazing finally happens! And it's the greatest thing imaginable! I turn to Memento, bearing a beaming smile. I can at least try to help him, considering the good news he just delivered. So, you want to know the meaning of life? I mean, I don't think I, I could tell you. I wouldn't know where to start. There are people who've dedicated their entire lives to that question. Philosophers who have... Oh, yes, I've met one. Uh, Mr. Hegel. Oh, he was quite the interesting fellow, I must say. He did not take his reaping quite well, I must admit. And he talked in droves. It must have been an hour before I could convince him to just go away. Interesting man. Shame I cannot speak to him again. So, if... I tell you what you want to know, then what do I get? Do I get to return? His eyes flicked to the side and he cocked a brow peculiarly. My apologies, but uh, no. You are deceased, Mori. There is no returning. So, what if I run? Memento stopped for a moment and stared directly at me. His red eyes widened into blood-red boons. You could run to the ends of this universe, but I would still be there to take you away. There is no being that can escape me. None ever have, and certainly none ever will. He explained flatly. It's simply how it is. For once, his gentle demeanor peeled back and gave way to something otherworldly. His voice chilled my bones to their marrow. I swallowed a heap of lead and receded. Do not mistake me, Mori. It would be... Unpleasant. A moment had passed and the chill vanished. It was replaced by a slight, warm smile. However, I will offer you extended time to make peace with things. It is morning now. I must take you beyond by sunset. You have all day to show me. Perhaps you can make peace with your departure. Many would give anything to have one final moment with the ones they loved, to actually say farewell, or to amend a bridge that has long been burned. So, I'll get to make peace with everything if I tell you what it means to be, uh, well, me? Yes, that is the extent of it. I look to the overcast sky. 
A cloud parted, giving way to a sunbeam. Me? I'm the one who gets to find closure? Not the mother Memento tore away from her family. Not a young lover who never got to see their significant other again. Just me. The man who has nothing. What is there to even close? I turned to face Memento. He shifted around in anticipation, biting his lower lip with a knife-sharp fang. Closer, huh? Well, what's a few hours compared to eternity? Fine, then. I'll help you. A snaggletooth grin spread across his face. Oh, most excellent. You have my internal gratitude. He reached out a paw, offering to pull me up out of the fountain's pool. Need a paw, my friend? I grabbed Memento's paw. For once, there was something tangibly there. It was almost uncanny. He hoisted me up and I could feel the strength of his forearm, the brush of his fur, and the coolness of his paw. Memento held my hand for a few seconds, staring intently. Um... Oh, my apologies. You humans are just always so warm. The sun sliced through the heavy overcast and the city was coming to life with activity. Children prepared for school, and adults began commuting to their nine to five. Everything was so normal. Life continued, unabated. So, then, where should we go? I don't know. You... don't know? Well, I'm not sure. I wanted to see what kind of joys you could explain to me. Joys? Yes, joys. The things that make humans smile. The things that they look back on fondly. They always speak of things like family, loved ones, or material items that gave them great joy. If humans did not have these joys, then what reason would they have to be so distraught by my arrival? Joy must be the key, yes? I guess... In a sense, everything we do is in service of maximizing our happiness. Be it money, a loved one, material items, as you described. So, show me. Show you. Yes, show me a joy. You had a joy, did you not? Um... Damn. It's been a long while since I've thought about that. When was I last happy? I skirted around the fountain and sat on the side facing the city. Memento hopped up beside me, legs crossed and arms leaning on his knees. He stared at me curiously, like a child expecting an answer. When was I last happy? Obviously not any time within these past few years. But... Even before then? Before I pushed everyone away. I delved deep, reaching into the past. Moonlit Waltz. Mm -hmm. It was a play I was in, uh, God, way back then. 
It was about a star who fell in love with a man on Earth. It was all about their differences, their growing connection, and all that. But the star had to return home since she was... a, a star. She had no choice. But before she left, she and the man danced in the starlight one final time. No. He was fully invested now. I ears perked and eyes wide. If they weren't so bloodshot, I dare say he'd look like a puppy of sorts. And that's what you remember, yes? So, show me. Well, I can't really show you. It happened a long time ago. Ah, right. That is true. Memento sprung up from the fountain's edge. In that case, when did this play happen? Not sure. I was big into theater during college. Like, ten years ago, maybe? So, around that time. Ten years. Got it. Wait, what are you doing? Uh Before I could finish that thought, Memento snapped his fingers and the entire city swirled into a vortex. What the hell are you doing? Going back, seeing your memory, and all that. Er, ah, here we go. This must be it. Last night, I met a star, and she was the most beautiful star you've ever seen. Who are you? Your hair, your body. You, you came from the sky? Yes, I have traveled so very far to arrive here, through endless space and past innumerable planets, many you have never would have imagined existed. And on my journey, I have arrived here in this meadow, with you. I don't believe it! This must be a dream! This is... Lycoris Community Theater, just as I remember. I stood at the very back of the bleachers, watching the actors from above. You... What is your name? Oh my fucking lord. Is that what I sounded like? Whoa. I turned to face Memento, who was sitting half-phased into an elderly woman. Um, you gonna get up? Oh, I didn't even notice. Uh, apologies, ma'am. This is your theater? His eyes were lit with awe at the half ass set and poor lighting. It was. It's a little derelict. I think they were renovating while the show was in production. I see. Memento walked through a couple seats towards the stage. Come on, I want to get a closer look. I Wait, what? Nothing I could do to stop him, I guess. I took the central staircase instead, careful to avoid phasing through anyone. The scene transitioned and the set shifted. You tell stories like this? But nothing's changed. Wasn't this the same place as before? Plays require some suspension of disbelief. 
Like, here, we're supposed to be back inside a house. You can see over there that the technicians are moving some of the furniture on set. Oh, so it's up to your imagination, then? I suppose. And this is what gives humans the joy? These play things? <laughs> um, uh, well... <laughs> if you're a good enough actor, then... Perhaps. On cue, my character ran in, opening the door in an overdramatic, frantic fashion. Father! Father! You would not believe what just happened! Oh, brother. Memento pointed gleefully. That's you. That's you. Yeah. Sure is. So, tell me more. About... About plays. All these theatrics and stuff. Oh, you must have been so happy, yes? Well... I suppose... Happy... Was I happy here? glanced at my character who was telling the story of his chance encounter with the star. The delivery, the enunciation, the stuttering. God, how did I even get the part? But I looked into my own eyes. There was passion. There was excitement. This must have been the first showing. I remember staying up all night. Butterflies flutter like crazy. The nerves, the anxiety, and then finally going on stage to perform. <sighs> Poor kid. He has no idea. Mm -hmm. No idea what comes next. Look at him, so full of aspiration, so full of dreams. I wanted to become a star on Broadway, to show the world my talent, my passion. <laughs> uh, perhaps it was doomed from the start. How do you mean? This kid had a dream memento. Something he clung to harder than anything else. Something that drove him to walk forward every day. Amid all the shit in school, amid the pain of other circumstances. And that is what a joy is? A dream? It could be. And what happens if that dream is impossible? He bit my lip and looked downwards. Now that's the real problem, isn't it? But you look so happy. Because I was a dumb kid who thought I could make it. I grew up on Julie Andrews and Fred Astaire. It is sad looking at it. But you are happy here, yes? So how could that be sad? It's a crapshoot, Memento. A game of luck that was never in the cards for me. No money to be made in it, as my father was so kind to put out. So what did you pursue instead? It was something he insisted was a safer bet. Maybe he was right. The play continued. Being in corporal did have its benefits since I didn't get tired from standing around. 
While I moaned every time I had a line, Memento's tail wagged uncontrollably. <laughs> That's a cute little puppy dog, huh? Who would have thought? Still, at least someone enjoyed my acting. It was a simple story. The performance spanning an hour and a half tops. A story about a romance that was never meant to be. Memento seemed most interested by the star. He kept asking questions about her, like, Why is she so reluctant to love the boy back? Or, Why does the boy love her so much in the first place? At one point, he even took to the stage and wandered around it as an intense scene played out between the star and my character's father. I reflexively yelled at him to get down, but I then remembered that we were merely reliving a memory. It took me a moment to figure out what he was doing. Memento stood by the star as she argued with the father. He mimicked her affections, her affectations, and tried mouthing her lines. There was a moment where the star paused. She had stumbled over a line. For a second, the theater was still. Even Memento had his eyes trained heavily on her. The peering gaze of the audience, the mounting pressure of that singular moment. Though it was merely a memory, I felt my heart stop, just as it did all those years ago. She stumbled again, then again, but they were not mistakes. She was doing it on purpose. In the original script, there was no stumbling, but here, she took her mistake and rolled with it. Her voice became coarse, and she stuttered in response to the father's anger tone. God, she was amazing. Memento hopped off after this and settled over beside me. Much harder than it looks, yeah? And you have to be in front of a whole crowd? Not sure if I could do it. I'm only ever seen by one person at a time. <laughs> but that girl, the star, she was wonderful. Yeah, she sure is. I stared at the star wistfully to hear her voice again after so long. Mori? Yeah. You all right there? Um. Yes, I'm fine. Before long, the final scene had arrived. Back at the first set, where the whole play began, the field dimmed a soft blue. My dear, please. There must be another way. The star looked silent and bit her lip. Unlike me, she was so natural. Her acting, subtle yet effective. She portrayed reticence with a slight glance to the ground. Anxiety with the beginnings of a stifled sentence. What was I doing with someone like her? You have taught me many things, my love. But I am a star, and a star must continue its journey across the sky. I know it is painful, my dear. But it is my nature, my purpose for being. 
It's just how it is. The character collapsed, clawing at his face. Honestly, that cry acting wasn't nearly as bad as I remember. The star walked forward, but my character grabbed her by the wrist. Just one more thing. There was a hush as the characters faced each other. I... I haven't taught you how to dance yet. The star's eyes flickered, mouth held agape. No, I suppose not. I placed a hand over on her wrist. Just one more, if you must go. Like this? My character shook his head. No, like this. Whoa. God, she was wonderful. I remembered every step I took was painstakingly choreographed. But for her, it came so effortlessly. She didn't deserve to be stuck with an oaf like me. Memento swayed to and fro with the music, though his movements were certainly much less refined. The actors twirled, and in response, the wolf twirled as well. A bit too much, and he tumbled to the ground. He laughed it off and continued staring at the dance. This was the pride of the show, the climax, the part everyone was waiting for. So, what do you think? It was very good. The ending dance, my goodness. Memento swayed back and forth, mimicking the motions. Could you show me? Show you... the moves? He nodded happily. Well, this happened over a decade ago. I don't think I remember the choreography. Memento's ears dropped in disappointment. Did this all answer your question? Well, somewhat. I'm still unsure what you mean by dream. A joy cannot just be that, can it? What about a sunset? Or the smell of a pretty flower? Well, I suppose, but... Oh, or belly rubs. You get... You get belly rubs? Sometimes, when I reap a dog lover, they ask me for one last pet. I must admit, they are quite pleasing. I did always want a dog. A nice and fluffy one. They're amazing creatures. So intelligent and affectionate. Like me? Memento said with an innocent look on his face. Well, you certainly got the look down. Alas, it wasn't meant to be. Too much work, my dad would say. Too much responsibility. So, a loving pal who is by your side, is that a source of joy? Well, yes, 
I suppose that could be a source of happiness as well. Well, I hope I can suffice in that role for now. Well, you're doing adequately. But back to the whole joy thing. They're, you know, fleeting. I mean, isn't that life? I suppose. But those are different. A pretty flower, a sunset, or belly rubs will gratify you in the moment. An ambition, however, that's a goal for the long term. Perhaps your whole life. Some get to achieve it, while others, you know. I watched a lot of classical movies during my childhood. Lots of big dancers, singers, and thespians from the 50s and 60s. I remember staring at the screen in awe of what I was witnessing. The colors of the films, the passion in their voices and movements. They were utterly enchanting. The feeling of, that feeling of captivation blossomed inside me. It made me want to do the same to others. To stand on a fancy stage somewhere in the lens of a big camera and to broadcast my talent to all the world. I so desperately wanted that dream. I wanted people to be mesmerized by me. I wanted it so, so badly. It was my raison d'etre. Not sure how to further answer your question. Sorry. No, it's fine. I think you illustrated it quite well, Mori. Well, let's just get this over with soon. So I can enjoy eternity. They probably got much better plays up there. Now if I'll get to meet Gene Kelly or someone, I could spend all forever learning from the greats. Oh, well, let's not be hasty now. It's the last time you're ever going to see Earth. I would suggest you appreciate it before you're gone. I was about to respond when Memento's ears perked up. What's that? He faced the stage. The cast had finished doing their bows and were returning backstage. Memento was focused on the girl who played the star. She had dark skin and braided black hair that tumbled down shoulder length. Her name was Stella. If this is my memory, then... I looked closer at Stella as she walked off stage. Her eyes looked red. The light caught the glisten of tears. Past me followed right behind her. What's going on there? Memento leaped onto the stage and followed the two. Hey, wait! The wolf follows Stella and my past self backstage. Now, Stella was audibly weeping. Past Mori lay a hand on her shoulder and she turned to face him. Come on. That's... Oh, somewhere quieter. The other castmates shot her concerned glances, but past Lori shielded her from view and led her to the changing room. Come on, 
He must have been in the crowd. Did you see your mom? Stella nodded. Memento saddled up beside past me, looking curiously at the weeping girl. What's happening? Um, Stella knelt down and buried her face in her hands. You're going through Stella. But never ever blame yourself. It was their decision. He never did enjoy this place. Always said it was a waste of time. Oh, maybe he's right. You know what? Your dad is a piece of garbage! Abandoning you like that? Crushing your dreams? What kind of parent does that? Leaving you to suffer in the wake of their own issues! They're awful scum! Scum on the earth! Forget about them! Stella looked shocked and stared at my past self, unblinking. Uh, I'm sorry, just... <laughs> Forget about that. Please, stay strong. You're an amazing actress. You'll do great things. He knelt beside Stella and offered a hug. She nodded and within a moment, we were locked in a tight embrace. Memento's ears perked, his eyes wide with curiosity as he approached the two. A beat slipped by, then passed me let go of Stella and stood back up. I'll be here if you need me. Need time alone? Stella nodded. My past self approached the door to rejoin the rest of the cast. Just as his fingers wrapped around the knob, he froze in place. What'd you do? Paused the memory. Why? You were leaving. Yeah, and... Memento turned to Stella, who was still kneeling. He approached her, looking intently at her face. What was that? Why was she weeping? I mean... I don't see how it's much of your business. Memento turned to me, confused. But these are mortal affairs, yes? Well, I... guess you're right on that front. So why do you hesitate? There is no reason not to. Still, I'd feel like a piece of shit for talking about it, even after I'm dead. Why? It's just... Because. I'd feel guilty regardless. 
Even if it really doesn't matter anymore. Guilty? He looked away from me for a moment, almost as if the word had caught him off guard. Are you familiar with this emotion, Memento? It's when you feel ashamed of how your own actions have affected others. Be it lying about something or... Pushing someone you cared about you away. Memento stared blankly for a few seconds. I see. Interesting. Immediately, as if to veer right away from the subject, he turned to Stella. You embraced this girl. Did you love her? She was a close friend. But... No, I would not say I was romantically interested. I'm... Well, I'm more into men, actually. Though I... Never found anyone. No one? Yeah. Just how it goes, I guess. Some were taken, while for others, it was just the wrong time. Would you have liked someone? A significant other? Someone to whom you'd deliver a lovely kiss, like you did at the end of the show? Well, it sure would have been nice. And this the romance? I have ferried off many who have had romantic connections in their lives. It's the biggest source of grief, I find. Could you explain this romance to me? It's a common thread among those I've taken away. Well, you don't need to be with someone to be happy. I know plenty of people content with being on their own. And for them, that was perfectly fine. But did you want to be with someone? It doesn't really matter what I wanted now, does it? I see. I apologize. Memento pushed his snout close to Stella's ear. The wolf then threw a pair of fuzzy arms around her static body. I hope things turn out well for you, miss. I hope you don't get to see me too soon. Memento stood back up. Why'd you do that? Because you did it. You did a hug. And so did I. Yeah, but it wouldn't have affected her. This isn't even her. It's just a memory. Yeah. So... Why? Memento tilted his head and pondered for a moment. Like you said, just because. She just put on such a stunning performance, and now here she is, crying backstage. I also wish to understand this. This? Yes, pain, I believe you call it. Not pain of the body, pain of the heart the soul there are almost always tears when I reap someone they're so deeply sad but then I meet some who are glad for it all to be over pains in life now gone forever things they never have to deal with anymore this Pain is what I am speaking of. 
You want to learn about sorrow? I mean, you're the Reaper. You should know all about that. I'm talking about living sorrow. Uh, the sorrow of life. I am death. I fill everyone with at least a bit of sorrow. So, what was your sorrow? You should know already how I died. Yes, but I wish to understand it. You want me to show you that miserable process I spent the last four years dealing with? I don't want to remember it. I don't want to relive that fucking hell. I understand your trepidation. Truly, this is a massive ask. But please, just let me see. You don't have to watch yourself. The wolf clasped his paws together, begging. <sighs> Do I want to see it again? Do I want to see it all over? Do I want to see her again? Closure. That's all I want here. Maybe it'll reveal something. Maybe it will show something different. Fine. Just don't expect me to be too enthused. Memento's tail wagged heavily, sending petals flittering left and right. My deepest thanks, sir. Memento snapped his digits. Again, the world swirled into a vortex. Going back. Wonder if I made the right choice here. One day, I noticed lumps that dotted the back of my neck. Not nothing of it then. Cysts, perhaps? They'd go away eventually. They never did. I called my doctor and I was assigned a hematologist. The waiting. God, the endless waiting. It was nothing. I'd be fine. The results returned. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. CLL. A rare and aggressive form of blood cancer. Treatment resistant, they said. I knew what they really meant. An 80% survival rate for five years. Though incurable, it was an optimistic statistic. I only lasted four years. Interestingly, I felt nothing. When the word chronic escaped the doctor's lips, everything became dreamlike. My dreams, my ambitions, my life. As they described my options, all I could think about was my own regrets. I graduated college with a bachelor's in computer science. Though, I longed for the stage. Reality pulled me to my senses. Maybe if I hadn't been in this position, afflicted by a disease that would addle me for the rest of my life, that would have been the right call. No money to be made, my father would repeat. But after death, that didn't matter. Maybe I could have made something of myself in those short years between then. Computers aren't... terrible, but... The 
first year. That first year. I never imagined something so hellish could be experienced by the human mind. It was a void that ate away at you the more the, than the cancer. The tests, the trials, the medication. The first months I spent in chemo, then came the radiation therapy every day of the week. By the end of each session, I was disgorging heaps of bile into the sink. I was parched, but no matter how much I drank, it never stayed down. And all of that, for what? I knew what lay ahead of me a few years down the line. I knew things would never get better. After the relapse, I made the decision to stop treatment. Year two. Things had gotten worse physically. But my mind, on the other hand, I think I'd accepted it by that point. One day, there was a bleeding under my skin. My platelet count was dangerously low. It'd be my first of many emergency room visits for the rest of my short life. It was getting more aggressive. My lymph nodes were so bloated they felt like rocks grafted beneath my skin. The first visit to the emergency room, I thought it'd finally be the end. Sadly, they managed to save me and put me back in a stable enough state to rest. Days spent at the hospital were long and arduous. I would often think back then about the time with my theater buddies and how everything was so close-knit. But after each play, invariably, some pieces of the group would fade off, a way to pursue other interests. Even Stella, who was stuck by me since the third grade, vanished unexpectedly. But one day, I saw her again. Apparently, she heard about my condition through mutual friends. Unlike me, she was positively radiant, glowing brightly like the star she was. We sat together, reminiscing on days long past. She was doing pretty well for herself. Not on Broadway, but apparently doing some commercials on television. She described all the new people she got to meet. All the hope for a bright future laid out before her. She was happy. She had hope. She had a dream that was within her grasp. She talked about wanting to be a star in a movie. And how she'd make sure I got some role in it as well. Thanks for the pity. But I think I'll pass. I, I don't believe I'd be all that great, I'm afraid. Can hard to be a good actor when you're all dying. You're pretty fortunate you get to do all these all these things. Bring you down. You're a lucky girl, Stella. More than you could ever know. She gave me a peculiar look. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I think the meds are messing with me. Uh, be sure to ask your doctor about that. We lingered for an awkward beat before she spoke again. I'm really sorry, but I need to go. 
I'll be sure to visit you again soon. She hugged me. It was great catching up with you, Mori. I nodded. Yeah. Such a lucky girl. So fucking lucky. Hospice care came by the third year. At this point, I was a dead man walking. Though, amid my deterioration, before the coming expiration date, they sure treated me nicely. Games, free massages, and end-of-life consultation. Not too shabby, I don't think. My new home was a dedicated building off to the side, where I'd spend my final days. It was all already sorted out by then. Once I kicked the bucket, the funeral services would be on the scene immediately. All my assets would go to my father. What little I had, anyways. My fate was written, and all I could do was sit around and wait for the sand to run out. By then, I loathed myself for that damn computer science degree. Four years of study, and for what? Some soulless programming job I couldn't care less about. A few years of boring, but financially stable work. It was... tolerable. Couldn't complain if it meant I'd be supporting myself. Even knowing now how it all turned out, the move I made was likely the safest option. Like Dad said, for a person like me, going into the arts would have been financial suicide. Some kid who enjoyed community theater, aiming for a chance at stardom off Broadway. I barely got into a 75% acceptance rate university. Juilliard certainly would have given me a passing glance. Yet, at this point, what did it matter? I only had a scant few years of real adult life. And they were all wasted on something I cared nothing for. Perhaps I could have at least withered away with the satisfaction of knowing I tried and failed as opposed to never having tried at all. Stella visited once more. It was winter, and the window was glazed with frost. Stella was adorned with a gaudy sweater, colored a lurid yellow. There was a spark in her eyes, a grin of excitement. Something huge had happened. You seem happy. I got it! I got the part! Oh. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I think that might be your line, actually. Oh. Yeah. oh. Mm. Did you know? Her voice rang out like a tropical bird. My agent managed to shoot my way into a pretty big movie, Mori. Her eyes beamed with joy. I'd swear she'd burst from the excitement. I forced a smile, nodding along as she explained just how proud she was of herself. So proud. So happy with her future. We did it, Mori. <laughs> we did it. We... My smile broke. We did it. Stella, I know I'm dying, but come on. You don't need to bullshit me. 
Her expression froze and she chuckled nervously. Uh, uh, well, I, I just... Is that what you came here to tell me? About the exciting life you get to live? I... I just thought it'd make you happy. Yeah. That makes me feel amazing. Alright. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Did I? No. You're fine. Everything's fine. You know, except for my number of days. Everything's fine. Ori, I... Yes, I, I thought it did. Did it help? I sat straight up and stared her directly in the eyes. I don't need your help, Stella. I don't want it! You have to understand that there's nothing you or anyone can do to make any of this okay. It's pointless. It's bullshit! Why the fuck do you even bother with me? You're unable to grasp the fact that I don't want to be reminded of what... What I could be doing. Marty, it's... That's not... Look at me! I tore my hospital gown away, revealing my deceased skin. Blotched black and blue from eternal bleeding. The bumps don't get any smaller. My hair bleached white after the treatment. Look at me! Look at me and tell me this is okay! I just want dignity. I just want to go with dignity. Brought it in, day in, day out, baby, every day. Trapped in this godforsaken hole of misery. Mori, stop, please. I I know what you're going through so much. I just I just want to be here for you. I want to help you. I understand your your pain. You understand? How could you possibly understand any of this? You, you're on your way to a glamorous, successful, fulfilling life. And I'm on my way to an early grave. By now, Stella's eyes were red. A glistening bead of a tear rolled down her cheek. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for all of this morning. But please, uh, don't take it out on me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Did I feel satisfied? Maybe a bit. Like some justice had been earned. It was the most pathetic thing you could imagine. I pushed her away. I made sure of that. And then I knew I shoved the last person who cared, even a little, away for good. I was well and truly Truly... What time is it anymore? How long will it be until it's done? I had no sense of when anything was. I'd wake up each night, 
confused and scared. I could barely recognize the faces of the nurses. The end had arrived. My body was finally giving in. I had no interest in the games, no interest in the massages. The only thing I wanted to do was simply lay there, staring up at the ceiling with eyes half closed and mouth slightly agape. The pain had gotten unbearable, and I'd spend most of the day addled by agony that the medication only slightly subdued. One night, the night before I died, I dreamt about mom and dad again. They were actually together, smiling. It was lovely. Dad had made a smoked brisket sandwich glazed with barbecue sauce. Even then, in my dying stupor, I could remember the tingling sensation of its sweetness on my tongue. Mom would laugh alongside him. <laughs> he even invite Stella over for some games. There was no particular passage of time. No real linearity to it all. One moment I was there with them, then I was middle-aged, nice and wealthy with several children and a loving husband. My parents were now elderly, so I took them on a nice tour of Europe. The way they looked so happy together as they stared at the Eiffel Tower. It felt real. There was another dream. One where I was still an infant, barely coherent with language. I showed my parents a finger painting. They laughed, very proud of their son's incoherent splattering of colors on a canvas. It was intended to depict a dog. The one I always wanted. A dog, yeah, a nice, big dog. I remember begging for one when I was five, but my dad strictly forbade it. Too much work, he said, too much responsibility. I wanted him to be cool. Big and strong, but affectionate. Someone who'd protect me and sit by my side during rainy days. Someone I could hug, feel their warmth, and let the woes of life wash away in their embrace. Someone who would, would never. That's how it went, then? You saw it yourself. Humans do often tell me of their suffering at the hands of illness. Does that disturb you? It's nature. This may sound disrespectful, but I truly have seen it all. I did not witness your unfortunate demise just to experience the human suffering. I understand that exists. I understand more than you could ever know. But I must ask, why? What do you mean? Like why we live in the first place if it all ends the same with you no as selfish as it may sound I wonder why I must exist I was placed into this world as a means of taking you beyond to take you to your final resting place beyond the instinct that is engraved into the very fiber of my being I cannot understand the purpose of it Things must change. Things must end. That I truly understand. 
and exist to perform. But the suffering? The sheer suffering of knowing I'm around the corner? Then why are you so... chipper? Chipper? Yes, you're... You're nothing like I would have imagined. I was never sure there was an afterlife. Much less a canine psychopomp who guide me there. Y you've seen thousands upon thousands of years of death and decay. You say it yourself. You've taken children, mothers, families. Those stricken with disease or those taken by freak twists of fate. You really have seen it all, haven't you? So, why do you care so much, Memento? Why do you care so much about our fleeting little lives if they are really are so transient? I didn't always. Early on, life was simple. I'm talking way early on, back before humans roamed the Earth. Then, it was easy. Survival of the fittest. Eat or be eaten. Our job was simply to take care of the spiritual remains. As time progressed, as creatures evolved, they gained intelligence. And so did we Reapers. I can't remember much of my early days, but this... Memento motioned to himself is nothing like what I was a million years ago. But that was par for the course with evolution. Things changed, but the constants remained the same. Survival of the fittest. Dispose of the organisms that have met their end, be it a sea sponge that starved in the primordial muck, or a towering dinosaur suffocating from the debris of an asteroid. But when humans began walking the Earth, everything changed. The intelligence they gained, they attained heights we could have never predicted. They crafted artwork, culture, and legacy that far exceeded any previous life form. Indeed, the world had begun to revolve around the perception of these new creatures, and so too did we Reapers need to evolve. As I said before, I can't recall much from the time before the humans. It was all primal, mindless, you could say. But soon, we grew to reflect them. Their philosophies, their desires, their bonds. The end goal was no longer to continue evolution, but rather to seek out the most fulfilling happiness an individual could experience. And perhaps, as I grew to reap more humans, heard their stories, their sorrows, their joys. I believe I grew to create my own philosophies as well. I will never go away, Mori. I am fundamental to the existence of life. But reapers change, and we evolve to fit new life forms. So what will I be like in a few thousand years? So much culture has changed in the past thousand years I've spent reaping humans. I've changed so much in these couple millennia. So perhaps in a million years, when humans are long extinct, what will become of this me, this memento? I'm chipper and kind because I've grown with this sort of human experience, but when that changes... <laughs> oh, you big lug. What's so funny? So, this whole song and dance we've been doing, <laughs> this is just you having an existential crisis? Well, when you put it like that. 
So, you put me through all this bullshit to help you come to terms with death? When you are death? Memento chuckled. <laughs> if we knew the Grim Reaper was a stupid puppy dog in need of a big head pat and a belly rub, I don't think anyone would be afraid of death. Seeing you questioning your own existence, what the hell it all means? That's, like, basic human philosophy. So, as far as understanding our little plight, I'd say you're doing pretty well for yourself, ma'am. It is quite vexing, I must admit. All this complexity. I would be lying if I said I didn't yearn for the simplicity of the Cambrian period. I sat on the fountain edge next to Memento. But back then, you couldn't get a nice belly rub. Trilobites aren't exactly the most affectionate organisms I've taken. Memento placed two paws on his fuzzy stomach and shook it around. But now, it seems, humans have a soft spot for... a <laughs> soft spot. So I decided to make this belly rounder, so there's more surface area. It's worked quite well for me, I must say. Well, I think it looks good on you. I said as I stroked its surface. Maybe keep it for the next era. It was cool to the touch, like the opposite end of a pillow. I wanted to rest my head on it. Memento chuckled a bit, clearly enjoying the experience. The big lug got on his back and unzipped his pants and exposed the whole thing. You're... Honestly, quite adorable. I try to be. It makes bringing the bad news easier for some folks. He's... really adorable. His fur, his stupid face. Memento peered up at me. Your face? What about it? You look red, like a big cherry. Wh what? <laughs> Why would I? Ugh. I buried my face in my hands. Humans do that when they're. I know, I know. How peculiar. I must say, you humans and your proclivities never cease to surprise me. Did you ever reap Freud? He did mention something called the Death Drive. Er, I was going to, but a woman in Algeria broke her neck while trying to clean a window, so another Reaper had to go about it. From what the other Reaper told me, it seems I was quite fortunate with only ever having dealt with Hegel. Memento rubbed the scruff of his thick neck. Yeah. Memento had a distant look in his eyes as he turned away from me. I guess today took a lot out of this death deity. Me as well. Looked up at the sky. Brilliant hues of red and orange painted behind the thick wisps of clouds. The sun was falling at a steady rate approaching the end of the day and the end of my journey. I stroked Memento's fur, but there was a peculiar lack of reaction from him. He kept looking away from me, cheating his head the other direction. Eventually, Memento gently pushed me off his stomach and he sat, looking troubled. Hey, are you alright? In truth, 
No. What's bothering you? Memento then turned his gaze to me, and I was met with a sorrowful expression. One I had never seen from the wolf until now. He looked tormented, like something was eating him up from the inside. Mori, how important is the truth to you? What? If the truth were to bring you more anguish than a blissful lie, wouldn't it be better than to live that lie until the end? <sighs> Memento, what are you saying? All this affection, all this praise. It has only been an afternoon, and yet I feel close to you. M Memento, can you get to the point? There's something wrong. I could feel it. Mori, I feel this strong burning emotion within me. It's... Is this shame? Guilt? Guilt? Guilty of what? Mori, I have deceived you. What? What do you mean? The whole this time, I thought it'd make the process easier. But I couldn't help but feel this overwhelming burden atop my shoulders as the day progressed. Memento stared up at the sky, which had become progressively darker as the sun continued its journey behind the horizon. But I believe I owe you the truth. As your friend. Mori, what I told you before, that I knew what was after. No. No. I was not being truthful in my statement. There's... There's no way! So wait, what, what do you mean? Memento got up from the fountain and looked me in the eyes. A deep anguish was roiling within him as he selected his next words. Mori, there is no paradise. What? My jaw fell slack in shock. The world seemed too slow. Then... What lies beyond that final horizon? Nothing. Nothing. At all? Not even us Reapers know. There's no trace left. Not a hint. The body returns to the Earth, and the spirit returns to the universe. What truly happens to your consciousness? We have no way of knowing. But in all likelihood, I don't expect anything to lie beyond that last horizon. This is the loss of me entirely. Loss of consciousness itself? How could you? How could you lie to me about this? Most humans, when confronted with oblivion, it's impossible for them to truly grasp it. They begin losing themselves in the despair. Many humans indeed ponder, or are even certain that there's nothing after death. But to receive the explicit truth from me, it breaks them. I simply wanted to. To what? To alleviate the anxiety as we explored your past. So, 
You lied to me about eternity. Because it was convenient. I... <sighs> Mori, I... I was promised the greatest reprieve I could imagine! An eternity, a paradise, after the hell I endured on Earth! I went through all of this just for you to satisfy your stupid curiosity! And what did I get in the end? Nothing! That's it! Do you immortals comprehend oblivion? Is it even possible? I'd ask you the same. Can you? Whenever I picture death, I imagine it's eternal black, a sea of dark in which I could exist forever. But that implies consciousness. What lies beyond exceeds any human's comprehension. Nothing. Pure oblivion. This piece of shit. I knew it was too good to be true. Truly, how could a death deity understand? Why would it care? To this thing, I'm a fleeing little gnat. No. Even less than that. I'm just a tiny blip. Even if this reaper feels guilty, a thousand years from now, it won't have mattered. Memento will continue to exist until the end of time. Perhaps until the very last life form takes its terminal breath and the universe collapses in on itself. But me, this is all I have. This is all that I am. M. No. No, no! I shove Memento aside. I... You can't do this to me! I'm well and truly sorry, Mori. But there's nothing you can do. Fuck you! I ran. Without a body or energy to waste, I could run as fast as I wanted and never slow down. The world was a blur, a blitz of color and light. No. No, he can't! He can't do this to me! It can't. It can't end this way! The life I lived, I left nothing behind but regret and suffering. Ugh. I don't deserve... I don't deserve any of this! Just... Please! Let me exist! Mori... You can't run. His voice comes from all directions. I couldn't tell where from. All I could do was keep running. Get away from me! I twisted around and dashed the other way. There has to be... Somewhere. Somewhere! Mori, please. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Stop following me! I... I have to run. Somewhere. Somewhere that's safe. He's behind me. I can feel it. Petals. They danced in the corner of my vision. I have to run. I have to get out of here. I have to escape. Please, God. Stop. Stop this at once. I told you, there was no outrunning me. This goes no further. Do you understand? Why? 
Why does it have to end like this? It's just how it is. It's time. It was pure silence. Not a hushed murmur, but rather total engulfing. Absolute silence. The water was so still it looked solid. There was no wind to brush the flowers that dotted the landscape. No sound of birds chirping or insects buzzing. Memento offered his paw and I took it. We walked closer to the wall. It was soft, yet I felt as though no force on earth could sever its grasp. The boards were silent as we strode across, not even the faintest thumping of wood. Silence. It was pure silence. Memento turned to me and sighed. Well, my friend, this is it. I approached the wall, brushed my hand against the petals. They danced around the tips of my fingers, but I couldn't feel them. I retracted my hand and the petals receded in a splash of red. Looking up, the wall extended far, far into the sky. At both sides, they stretched beyond the horizon towards infinity. You may have a seat here. You can take as long as you like. Thank you. I'll... Yeah. I took a seat on the bench nearby and simply watched the petals ripple across the wall. I've had those who spent hours just staring. Time doesn't move here. It's quite beautiful, is it not? Memento, tell me. Yes? When the last organism dies, what becomes of you? Eventually, all life in the universe will be extinguished at some point, yes? When the universe collapses in on itself. Heat death, I believe it's called. Mm. I have never given that much thought. I suppose, then, we reapers may disappear as well. And what of before? Where were you before life first sprung from carbon? Memento approached the flowers and gently produced a long, gorgeous lily from it. Its petals radiate in the deepest, most brilliant red. Its stem lithe like a silk scarf encircled his finger. Memento placed the flower in my lap. Where were you before you were born, Mori? Do you recall that? He said, staring back at me with a distant expression. You've shown me a lot, Mori. More than I ever could have hoped for. I know none of this is easy, but let me impart some perspective that may comfort you. Perhaps it may help you accept what's to come. Memento sat right beside me and tenderly placed a paw on my shoulder. You went through eternity once. What's another one to you? Well... 
Life is just an impossibly thin line between two forevers. But relative to that thin line, the experience varies wildly. Some get to be wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. To control and shape the world and be writ into the annals of time. Remembered and celebrated for generations. Others, well, die in their thirties, miserable, alone and forgotten. We all end up in the same place and we all come from the same place. But that thin line will always be unequal. Some just get to be happier and that's it. So why couldn't I have been happy? It's so unfair. Memento stood silently and stared into the wall. Perhaps it is. Perhaps that inequality is just a fundamental truth of the universe. Just as I am. I stood up and faced the wall. I think... I'm ready. Are you... sure? You... Uh, there's still time to... Memento, please. Memento bit his lip in a bitter expression before stepping aside, allowing me to approach. Time felt as though it had slowed to a crawl. One step, two step, three. My nose was now grazing the petals of the wall. They danced and flickered in and out, as if assuring me that everything would be fine, that everything would be okay. No smell, no sensation, nothing. I took one last breath and... Wait. I felt a paw seize my hand firmly. Wait, just one moment. Memento. I... I... I felt a pair of cool, fuzzy arms wrap around me. I'm sorry, Mori. Was he... sobbing? I... I'm so sorry for... everything. That you had to live like that. That you had to die like that. All of this, it's so... it's so unfair. Why? Why did you have to suffer? And this is all you get in the end? This is all that awaits you? And everyone else in this world? I... I've spent so long detached from you humans. Your lives, a foreign concept. But now, what is this... this feeling inside me? It hurts. It hurts so much. I just... I... The wolf sobbed deeply into my chest. Memento. He bawled, howls piercing the silence. Why does it have to hurt? I held Memento close and rubbed the back of his head. It sucks... I know. Believe me, I know more than anyone. I hate that it has to end this way, Memento. But you won't remember me. In a thousand years, 
I'll just be another one of the bunch. It's okay. I'm just... Not important. No, I don't... I don't want to forget you. I don't want to forget anyone. The people I've led here. Their smiles, their sorrows. I understand. I understand now the injustice of it all. You and everyone else. I don't want forever. I don't want to change in a thousand or a million years into someone completely different. I don't want to not love anymore. I betrayed your trust. I deceived you. And to lead you here after everything that's happened. He was inconsolable. I've never seen anyone cry so harshly. His voice hoarse with addled wailing and streams of tears that splattered the ground. Just let me go and you can forget about this all. Memento, I'm, I'm tired. If there is nothing this then, fine. At least it stops. You raised and dashed my hopes. But hey, doesn't matter now, does it? Memento started to calm down and look towards me. I know. I know that I must. He wiped his tears off with a tail and took a deep breath inwards. Mori. If it means anything. Memento drew closer to me. May I ask you one more thing? Just one more thing. Before you depart. Mm -hmm. What is it? Can you teach me how to dance? What? Before I knew it, the world melted around me once again. This, this is, Wait, what? This is, we're in space. To my right, galaxies light years away. To my left, planets and moons colored purple, blue, green, and silver danced around brilliant nebulas. It was a tornado of red petals spinning and swimming like a school of tropical fish through the sea of stars. Memento, where is this? Where the star went. Her home, her wonderful home. There were no pounds, nothing keeping me grounded. I twirled around and a plume of petals surrounded me. Memento floated up towards me, flowers now erupting from his tail. He slid a paw on my shoulder, another in hand. Like this? I looked into his eyes, radiating with wonder. One last chance. One final moment. No.
like this. Memento took to the choreography quickly. Our stage, a galaxy, our audience, the stars. The memories of the waltz returned to me immediately, as though I had just practiced them yesterday. But this time, I felt confident, more fluid, more alive than any of my previous performances. Memento and I danced across the cosmos, our gazes locked into each other's. This feeling, my heart, my chest, chills, fluttering, it's all so much. Is this what you humans call romance? Is this love? I simply stared at the wolf and smiled. He was certainly no Fred Astaire. His movements were sloppy and he wouldn't stop jittering. At one point, Memento tripped over my feet and we tumbled together into a pool of glimmering stars. The stars were warm and Memento's body was like a heavy blanket weighing down on me. Despite the slip up, neither of us could shake the smiles that were plastered on our faces. We laughed together before Memento picked me up again and we continued the dance. Why can't we just fade into the stars and dance for all eternity? The waltz must end, Memento. The show must stop. Otherwise, why would we ever cherish it? This one wonderful moment together. We progressed into the next step, and the next. The time for the finale was approaching, yet we savored every moment of our dance. And we ramped up to the conclusion, as the final steps approached, it all stopped. Is that... it? No. There's one last step. Then what is that? I can hold your hand if you want. It won't make you disappear too, will it? Memento shook his head. No, nothing can. Thank you, Memento. Thank you for being with me. Memento grinned. It's what I do. It's just how I am. I simply smiled back and rested my head on his chest. It was... warm. For once, the wolf was actually warm. We both stepped forward and plunged into the flowers. The end. Well, and we gotta give the credits. <laughs> Don't leave before the credits, folks. <laughs> yeah. Hello there. <laughs> you need to know the wonderful people who made this game. Yeah, right wherever now. they may be. Yep. All the people. Yeah, wherever who made you they cry. may be. Wherever they may be. <laughs> we'll have to find them. <laughs> Who's the Bowser impersonator? It's me, Bowser, one of the developers. 
This story was made for the May Wolf Furry Visual Novel Game Jam. I'll be sure to post a link once this becomes a VOD and on YouTube. <laughs> if you have some time, please check out some of the awesome submissions made by other developers. The story was created by Team Lycoris. We're five passionate visual novel developers who wanted to come together and create a kick-ass story for the Game Jam. If you liked our story, please go check out the other projects we're working on. Here we go. These credits. Cetus is the author of our story. He's also the author and developer for ICO. It's a 90s mecha anime inspired furry VN. Arcadia drew the art. They're developing, writing, and illustrating Hearts Faster Than Light. It's a queer furry space opera kinetic novel. Bowser, that's me, did the coding and programming for this project. It, it's not really me. <laughs> You're wondering how I got in this situation. But I am the author, or Bowser is the author and developer of Chord Progressions. It's a slice of life romance VN that focuses on musical themes. Yeah, it seems, <laughs> seems familiar. Raki made the UI. He's made the graphics for Chord Progressions, Psychic Connections, and Cleaved. Cleaved is a fantasy-inspired romance. Psychic Connections is a slice of life with a supernatural twist. Last but not least, we have Camazool, our musician. He's composed for Distant Travels, a sci-fi drama visual novel. He's also made tracks for Ocean Avenue, a slice of life sports VN. We don't talk about it. <laughs> Sorry, every time. <laughs> no, Bowser, stop. Oh, oh my gosh. god, Ocean Avenue? Oh, oh. Now it's your turn to be crowned. Now it's your turn to be shouted out. A quick special thanks no. to Mira, Yao, and Radium for being our test Yow. audience and giving us feedback. <laughs> Burn in the praise. No. If you would like to give us feedback, we'd love to hear, see your comments on our itch.io page. Definitely check it out. While you're there, please take a moment to give our game your honest rating. Ratings are great. Or ratings greatly boost our analytics and make our project visible to more people. Please do. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our art. This was a passion project that took a ton of time and effort, and we're all incredibly proud of what we made. Please take a moment to tell someone you care about that you love them today. You never know when they'll be gone. Take care, everyone. That's my line. <laughs> Take care, folks. <laughs> well, and of course, as always, I got the wrong uh, audio source here. Oh, I think the game's audio is up here. I'm going to do a little voice acting credit for our lovely volunteers here. This was done on a bit of a last minute notice. I reached out on Monday, I think it was, and we got this together by Tuesday night. <laughs> so, Dirk the Panda, that's me. Narrator Mori. Oh, I forgot to give past, but past Mori is, you know, also past Mori and Stella is Yao <gasps> FA. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was a last minute choice. <laughs> Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> this is totally not on the fly. <laughs> Internet this magic. Is... Wow, look at that live. <laughs> Stella Passmore. Yeah, v FEA. And last but not least, of course, Memento is Ice Fang. Gotta check both of them out. I'll be, once again, posting links in the description stuff. I could do a quick winging it memorization of Yao's Twitter and Ice Fang's YouTube. And hopefully this will work. Watch this not work. 
And of course, YouTube slash at IceFangVA. Check both of them out. They make great stuff. Oh, or well, yeah, there's some great Hello. volunteer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm so honored to have both of you here. And oh, yes, yeah. yeah. awesome to be here. Well, thank you so Ash. much. And if you don't mind, I'll pull up the group source because that was the thing I was intending to show of the three of us. But apparently I forgot to include myself. Oops. Pretend I'm here. <sighs> it's me. I'm here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this didn't work earlier. Magic, oh, technical wow. magic. Yeah, that's so cool. I saw this the other <laughs> day. I'm like, PNG tuber was created by Arcadia. The best. <laughs> and of course, the so, so so panda. Cool. If you want to give the shout outs again, feel free to. Actually, no, wait. I'd have to do a shout out command because you can only do like one at a time. All right, folks. We are going to quickly. Uh, <laughs> Open up, mix it up. Please, nobody do anything bad. <laughs> I'm, like, terrified. Because I'm doing this just for the voice commands. I did not prepare, like, a full pre-written thingamajig for it. I'm only doing this for the shout-out command. But, yeah. All of them. The Yeah, see just the writer. We got Bowser at Programming, Arcadia Art, Camazone Music, and Racky with the UI. Quite a power team, and... I'm curious to see if, you know, Team Lycoris does more things or how that will go about. Because, yeah, I remember just hearing about, oh, this is just, you know, we're doing a project for the May Wolf contest. It wasn't until, like, this weekend, this week, I heard about it and was like, oh, shoot, this is what happened. <laughs> so, any thoughts you guys have to say, too, uh, while I do this? While I hacking, you know... <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, of course, the story was beautiful, the art was amazing, but, uh, like, the the musical cues and the changes to all the different, like, switching between tracks, it was just, like, heart-wrenching, right in my soul. It was, it was amazing. Honestly, like, I was... <laughs> I will I, I, agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I'm, oh, I was just going to agree really quickly, like the music and the art, the art and the music sell this to me so much mm -hmm. every single time. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. As an I actor, mean, obviously I have to pay attention to the words all the time, but like the accoutrements of what is yes. on screen and what's like in my ears. Yes. That's really where the emotional through line hits for me. 100%. And I very much appreciate all that work. Yeah. It's like a good seasoning. Like, you could have a great steak or a great chicken or whatever, but if you don't have, like, any sort of seasoning or whatever on there, that's good. The spice. The spice! The special spice. Yeah, because yeah, I do have to credit, you know, the other members of it. Like, yeah, Cetus is writing. I... I had no clue what to expect going into this because I had read ICO for my channel before the hiatus and whatnot. I could totally relate to hiatuses, but yeah, I, it was totally a change of pace from what I expected in the most pleasant surprise type of way. Mm -hmm. So it was like, yeah, not only did it work so well with the art, music, and user yes. interface, but yeah, just just such a maturity to it. like. I did not know that. I'm like, whoa, you did this? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And then, of course, last but not least, the UI blends with everything, too. Like, I, that's, that's like the programming of the UI. It's kind of like the unsung hero of things. If it works fine, it's people true. don't say anything. If right. it messes up, why is it not working? <laughs> that's yeah, so true. Honestly. <laughs> uh -oh. And yeah. yeah, they both did a fluid job with that. And props mm -hmm. to them to for making it like you know like i said mesh everything just meshes what each yeah. member mm -hmm. just somehow just kicked it out of the park and to think this was done in like about a, a month, month? Yeah. yeah like for a one month-ish contest like no <laughs> gosh such like, a deep story with just a completely cohesive style it was, it was just brilliant yeah what happens I'm just... when you have like all this talent condensed in one place and then you give them a month and they're like, 
we can do this. And then, like, <laughs> we gotta finish. We gotta finish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I, I'm hearing about the multiple creators here talking about the all all nighters that they did and like, oh, the yeah. crunch at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I remember talking with like uh, Camazul like one time about it, and he had just finished the songs. He's like. I forgot how long he said it was, but it was like a really short period to get like 48 minutes worth of songs. But he was so tired that he accidentally said 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> like imagining a 48 hour story. But yeah, it, it does go to show that, yeah, they, they, they got the skills and mm -hmm. I really hope this, you know, puts them in that spotlight. Heck yeah. <laughs> no, this, yeah. Can't, can't say much else other than that. You worked for it. Mm -hmm. Look forward to whatever you do. <laughs> and, and yeah. Um so that Multiply that was... this praise, audience. Please give them all of your support. Tell your friends these are amazing creators and they need as much support and love as you can possibly give them. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, Indeed. they'll keep making more wonderful stuff. That's right. Yes, please, please check out review. all of their original works. Support the them. Praise. Spread the love. Mm -hmm. Give them that exposure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if you can't donate. Uh, yep, as always, I will make sure to post the links in the description. But for now, giving the temporary love into the chat for anybody who's here right now. So, yep, keep in mind this will be a VOD on my main YouTube channel, Dirk the Panda. And. Still debating if I should keep it permanently on Twitch or not. Probably will. I mean, nothing too graphic. <laughs> so, you know, I know some, like, things I have to upload as VODs. It's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just let this go into the abyss. <laughs> but, yes. This, while it is still here at least, there will be a description and all that. And, yeah, for anybody who missed it, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, even if you can come. Mm. Hey, I okay. want to highlight something that was said in uh, chat right now. Uh, Cam is about to finish the album art so that you can listen to this music that we were praising. Yes, for Distant Travels. He is compiling the album for Distant Travels. That is something he's been working uh, pretty hard on. Or was it? Yeah. Yeah, gonna, Distant Travels. I'm going to shake you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. This game. <laughs> oh, that too. I thought... Oh my god. I, he's doing the R for this too, because he did mention Distant Travels also oh, to me. Sorry. <laughs> but yes, it, the album art for this game too. I have not seen that yet, but in addition to that, I would say, the Distant Travels art was also pretty good. But yes, before you depart, albums, whatever comes of this, honestly, I'm going to be like, hands down, just like, I gotta get it. <laughs> Sorry for the misdirection. <laughs> Can I shake you? Ah... Uh. <laughs> I can't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gotta get memento plushies, honestly. Please. See I it, just want to cuddle it. him. Yeah. Give him belly rubs. Oh my uh. gosh. <laughs> yep. He's sleeping. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I guess if if there's uh, anything else before, uh, before we depart, uh, uh, <laughs> Derek, yes. I still haven't taught you how to dance. <gasps> oh my gosh! Let's do it! <laughs> Am I, who's gonna be my okay. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, it's gotta be you and Ice Fang, because Ice, Ice Fang's oh, the wolf yeah, that's here. Right. And, you, and <laughs> you're, you're, you, you got the Moria look to you. <laughs> you two like dance over there. Dance. I'll watch. <laughs> no. Like this. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, the fun of it. Oh my gosh. After I rise. <laughs> all right then. So, yeah, of course, Arcadian, to all the creators that have come, thank you for, you know, appearing and watching our stuff. It's always nice to have a, you know, a creator look at it. And, you know, it's cool to see all the other creators who have done videos on this. Speaking of which, nudge, nudge. Ice Fang released a video of it earlier this week. Yeah. yeah. It was a cold so if you, cut. If you too, want so. more memento, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. More tears probably too. Oh, so many. We had to stop. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had to stop I'm so I could to watch recover again. myself. Oh. Uh, God, th- yeah. Everybody's first time with this is like... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like I, could vo- I was like vocally stopping when I read this yeah. like on my own first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But yes, without further ado we will not be rating into anybody for this i think it's good to just clean cut it no no change of tone or anything just a nice farewell to everybody so yep once again thank you all for coming and do y'all have your outro phrases you want to say before i follow it up uh you're all wonderful beautiful people thank you for watching us um and keep making awesome stuff. Everybody, no matter who you are. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, buddy. Do I have an outro phrase? I don't know. Do you? Make one <laughs> up. <laughs> um. Before we depart. Good. I'd like to say thank you for watching your whole amazing people. Whether you're watching right now or in the future. Yep. Or Thank even you. if we, Yep. Or even if we've departed. We oh. always appreciate it. It's a hard to think, but you know, just a thought. Uh, but let's you know, end it on more of a high note. My usual outro is here we go. Thank you all for entertaining me, and thank you all for letting us entertain you until next time take care folks <laughs>